She attended the Nigeria College of Accountancy Plus, where she obtained a postgraduate diploma in accounting and thereafter got a second master's degree in public administration in 2005. Her two doctoral degrees were obtained in 2002 and 2017, respectively. The Doctor of Letters degree in the Nigerian Tax Systems was from the St. Clements University, Tox and Carpus Island, British West Indies, now St. Clements Group, in 2002. By the 2017, she obtained a PhD in taxation and fiscal policy from St. Monica University, New Cameroon. In 2016, she was invited by Babcock University in Sharemo, of the state, as adjunct associate professor of taxation and fiscal policy. The Canadian University similarly appointed her early 2017 on the same role of adjunct associate professor of master's degree program. She was on this road when the left university invited her on June 6, 2017, to join the Caleb University as a fruitful professor of taxation and to pioneer the taxation department as its head. So, Professor Shomori is currently uh, an adjunct professor of taxation and fiscal policy at Bangkok. She is also the fiscal commissioner and technical advisor at the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, Fiscal Roundtable which is in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. She is the lead for tax and fiscal policy thematic group for the NESG Trade and Investment Policy Commission. She is a council member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. She is an executive council member of the African Union of Tax Institutes. She has published uh, four books on Nigerian tax reforms and type of taxes across the globe that are currently on sale and displayed in the CITM library and in our library here in Caleb University. Of course, he wrote the award-winning competitive essay on improving tax compliance among self-employed persons and small businesses. It was one of the three that were published by the Commonwealth Association of Tax Administration in London in 1989. Additionally, she has contributed articles to academic journals in Nigeria and outside Nigeria and presented papers at seminars, conferences, and workshops. Professor Shobori has in-depth experience in Nigerian tax system spanning 40 years, having worked in FIRS from 1970 to 2010 and retired as a coordinating director in charge of compliance and uh, enforcement groups. One of the notable achievements in the FIRS <laughs> was that she took part in robust enforcement activities and actually led some enforcement teams together with the coordinating director of tax operations group, which realized about 500 billion over a period of five months. She coordinated more or less than 40 task conferences, seminars, and workshops. Under her leadership, the software application program for FIRS was successfully deployed. Awards. Professor Shomori has won less than 44 awards. They include the 2015 Kwame Nkuma Africa Leadership Prize as Africa's most outstanding tax administrator. For <laughs> the distinguished tax personality from both the University of Benin and the Society of Women in Taxation. And she got the Award of Excellence from the Joint Tax Board. On 16th December 2015, the Quarter States Pillar Revenue Service gave her a special award in recognition of contributions to the advancement of Quara IRS. Similarly, in 2017, the CITN handed her an award in recognition of her contributions towards the development of taxation practice in Nigeria. <laughs> While at FIRS, she was the first woman to hold 11 
significant positions in our organization. One of our major contributions to the Chartered Research of Taxation is the endowment of a professorial chair in taxation and fiscal policy at Babcock University Nation, a rare feat which is the first in the history of the institute. The All African Students Union conferred the 2015 Government Group African Leadership Award on the CITA in as Africa's most efficient taxation institute. It should be noted that this was the first public award for the institute. Distinguished devices, it is my pleasure to present to you Professor Olatechu Akiola. Thank you. 
on behalf of the Nigerian economy summit group. Um, the how to map out reforms that will drive tax revenue growth in respect of three thematic areas, namely tax policy reforms, tax legislative reforms, and tax administrative reforms. During the research studies, many questions were answered. In what way should those who are not in the tax level be included? Why do people evade tax? Why? Is there any reason why people evade tax? Those are some of the questions that we raised during that in during that kind of research. I'm happy that some of those that did research with me are here in this hall this morning or this afternoon. Now the topic is about taxpayers. Therefore, it is significant to note that the concept that the taxpayer is an important variable in the achievement of the objectives of every tax revenue policy. As important as a taxpayer is, there are some times that a taxpayer will be agreed. When is a taxpayer agreed? When? A taxpayer is agreed when it's the drive of legal rights. When a taxpayer is ill treated, that taxpayer is agreed. When a taxpayer is provoked or vexed, that taxpayer is agreed. And when a taxpayer is wrong, that taxpayer is also agreed. So those are instances where a taxpayer can be agreed. Now, we have noted that the revised national tax policy also focuses on taxpayers. And what is the definition? Who is a taxpayer? Am I a taxpayer? Are you a taxpayer? There are so many definitions of who a taxpayer is. But the definition that appears to me most is the one from a book called Modern Taxpayer Charter. It's an all encompassing booklet. It defines a taxpayer as a person who, under the laws of the state, may be liable to tax on the state, file a reporting, make a disclosure to the state, and also make sure that things work the longer and pay the tax as has been used. Hessing, Elfers, Robin, and Wendy, they were revealed that there are three groups of taxpayers in the world. This is based on their research. One, there are taxpayers who never evade taxes. There are taxpayers who will be trying to pay every now and then, and there are taxpayers who will be paid on a regular basis. Likewise, Bobo in 1974 and Tokyo in 2003 developed three types of taxpayers. One, social taxpayers. These are taxpayers that are influenced by norms. Two, there are intrinsic taxpayers, those that are sensitive, sensitive to institutional factors. And three are tax evaders. That's another group. These are the taxpayers that have low tax morale. Now this lecture, the synopsis of the lecture is structured into six parts. Section one examines taxpayers' arguments or protests or campaigns or resistance. Section two is about the voices of government, especially that of the Minister of Finance. In section three, I try to examine voices placed globally. That is, the voices of the World Bank, or the voices of IMF, or the voices calling or crying against international tax evasion or That's in section three. Section four, addresses tax compliance. Why section five examines the disconnection between taxpayers and government? Don't forget the topic of this lecture is taxpayers, voices, disconnect, tax compliance. So in all these six sections of this book of the lecture, I have tried to capture everything that is the topic itself. So section five examines the disconnection between taxpayers and government. How taxpayers have been connected to tax authorities. Section 6 is the concluding part. Where the authors are expressed and the recommendations are put for improved voluntary tax compliance. We now go to section 1. As I mentioned, section 1 is about tax resistance, why people resist taxes. And there have been resistance in respect of different types of taxes. 
that the existence in respect of air travel tax, bachelor's tax, dog tax, mom's tax, real estate tax, road tax, and so on and so forth. And the origin of war tax assistance can be traced to 1202, when King John of England raised taxes to pay for a new war against France. There is the popular slogan, no taxation without representation, and also describes the issue of tax protest. The French people, they have always been complained, and there are so many riots about taxes. This is as far back as 1381. Even in recent times, taxes is still the only issue in France. Somebody asked, why do the French charge such high taxes? The economist, the journal, explains that because they used to get good public services in return, but at the time, their tolerance is wearing thin. Mr. Piscoscovici uh, acknowledged at the time that the French are fed up with taxes. That reminds me of Nigeria when the Nigerian government wanted to increase the rate of VAT. Some people said Nigerian citizens are fed up with taxes. So here, here the French people, they said the French are fed up with taxes. At the time, the French protested. They raised their voices. They said, taxes, taxes, and taxes. And the state is asking us to tighten our belts. But they are doing the opposite. Living where they are money. Nigerians who have said this, they are the senators. They said they ask us to pay more taxes. They are not the senators are uh, enjoying. There have been arguments about taxation in so many countries. Tax protesters' arguments can be illustrated in one case called Chief versus United States that concerns John L. Chief, a tax protester who claimed that some of the provisions of the tax code are unconstitutional and he was prosecuted for tax evasion. That's another example in another country. Now, it is not only in Nigeria that is about tax evasion. Then, during my research and writing this lecture, I discovered something that I never knew about, even though I have done quite a lot of work in taxation. I never knew that there is something called tampon tax. Tampon tax, tampon is sanitary part used by women. But some countries, not in Nigeria, in other countries, they decided to put a VAT on sanitary parts of women. So they imposed taxes on tampon tax. So a lot of people in the countries where tampon tax was imposed, they started to protest. Also in UK, they protest. So right now, they are trying to eliminate the tampon tax. So Tesco company in UK was the first British supermarket to effectively scrap the tampon tax. So efforts are now done. There also have been protests on fuel. We have had fuel protests in Nigeria some time ago. In 2000, in the whole of Europe, there was a protest on fuel tax. In Nigeria, we had protests on women's revolt, which was led by Mrs. Fungayo and Fungayo and Sonkuti. And then there was the Igbo Women's War. It's another protest that we're familiar with in Nigeria. Now, value added tax. There have been protests in value added tax. Value added tax was first of all introduced in France in 1954. We know that value added tax is a consumption tax. It has some features, beautiful features. And value added tax is a money scheme. I've never seen a country that has introduced VAT and has abolished it because they get a lot of revenue from VAT. Nigeria is not an exception to this. But countries generally protest. Each time we want to introduce it, there's always a protest against value added tax. In the case of Nigeria, there was also a protest against VAT that it should not be introduced. The IMF and the World Bank, they were against the introduction of VAT in Nigeria. I happened to be there because I sat in a study group that actually recommended, and that was 1991, I was a secretary of the study group that recommended that value added tax should be introduced into Nigeria and that there should be a shift from direct tax to indirect tax. So when value added tax was about to be introduced in Nigeria in 1991, and the rate of value that was to be introduced was 5%, there was a lot of protest that the 5% would just not fly, especially the foreign bank and the IMF would say rates should be as high as 10%. But the chairman of FRS that time, Mr. J.K. Nayuchi, insisted that the rate would stay at 5%. That was why the rate of the 
rate was 5 percent at the time, it was introduced. So that is also a form of protest that the rate should not be to be higher than 5 percent. Recently, as we speak now, Nigeria is planning to also increase the rate of VAC, but I don't think that has been concluded. Just as we have protests for VAC in Nigeria, protests in so many countries, Bahamas protested in India. It was likely that the introduction of VAC will lead to inflation. Also, Bahamas they also protested. In fact, in Pakistan, the Pakistan traders fund did not take drive against the position of VAC. Uganda tried and protested that they didn't want VAC. Tunisia that was also they, they, they said they were not going to come to uh, pay the tax. The new the taxi driver said, I will not pay tax. And they dared the police to try to enforce the new tax against them. United Kingdom, when the AT was introduced in Ukraine on 1st of April 1973, it was assessed by critics as an economic setback. Even recently, in June, June in January 2011, the rate of value added tax was increased from 17.5 to 20%. So the rate of AC in UK at the speak now is 20%. But there was a great riot in UK when it was introduced, when it was increased from 7.5 to 20%. Another argument surrounding VAT is whether VAT is regressive or not. A lot of citizens and taxpayers have said VAT is regressive. So there has been argument. The opponents of VAT in UK claim that is regressive and it is paid only by consumers. Whether they are rich or poor, they have to pay. So in that sense, their VAT is pressing. In the United States, there are also several arguments whether VAT should be introduced or not. As we speak now, VAT does not have a head. USA does not have a VAT. They have a form of sales tax. But they have put up some arguments whether it should be introduced in the US or not. And their arguments against introduction of VAT in the UK is that is that issue of regressivity. They are still on that. And the opponents point out that that will increase cost for business through an exchange of production. VAT, another argument against VAT was that it can cause inflation. Some taxpayers have said it will cause inflation, some said it will not cause inflation. These are all tax arguments. So there have been some survey in respect of whether VAT can cause inflation. And I'm saying, conducted a survey in 22 countries to check whether VAT can cause inflation or not. Arising from the findings of Alan Tate, he concluded that there, there seems to be nothing inflationary about the use of VAT. In certificate of 41 cases that we reviewed, the introduction of VAT did not alter the rate of price change. Therefore, the VAT was not a contributing factor to the inflation. There are other protests. The hand is charged or when for In fact, the Nigerian Association, as what I gathered somewhere from the newspapers, they described the tax as wicked, satanic, and oppressive. That's where the tax is revealed. On the mountain central, the tax rate is spent on land discharge for the vast animals. There are other protests, instead of the post communication tax bill, which is going to be at 9 percent.
care of the cat body is too high. In Nigeria, the Manufacturing Association complained that a typical company pays too many taxes, the company pays tax, companies in contact, the pay VAT, the drone tax, and inspectors of transactions, where assets are disclosed and disposed of by that company, capital gains tax is also paid. These taxes are too many. That is the respect of what the price of taxes. A lot of people have complained that too many taxes are being collected in Nigeria. But it's not that government is not listening. The government has done something about the multiplicity of taxes. That was what led to the promulgation of taxes and levies approved for collection. This law, which was enacted at the 21 of 1998, was later amended in 2015 by executive order signed by Okunjo the former minister of finance. But the taxes and levies, which was meant to be amended, by the time the amendment came out, taxes that were formerly 65 under the 21 of 1998, they grew to 65. So people now started talking. We said we wanted to amend this tax to make life comfortable for us. Instead of the list to reduce from 65, well, from 39, the list has now increased to 65. Another recent argument is should government increase the grant rate? Fund the minimum wage. I'm sure many people in this hall you must have participated in this kind of work um, argument whether government should increase the bad trade. Some said it should be done, some said it should not be done. Some even cry out. Is there no alternative? Must government increase the rate of VAT? Why now? This is bad timing and inconsistent with current economic reality to contemplate the rights now. Won't the Increase due to higher inflation and more unemployment. Will people not become poorer? These are some of the questions, some of the voices that were raised against the, that policy proposal. There are also there have been arguments for and against petroleum products. Whether it should be charged, whether that should be charged on some petroleum products, such as premium motor spirit and others. Fortunately, on 31st of May, the federal government removed VAT on liquefied petroleum gas. So we have a government that is listening to the voice of taxpayers. Another cry has been against tax incentives. Taxpayers have cried, tax incentives is a total waste. Remove it from the statute. We don't need tax incentives. Actually, also called on that, as it is a total waste, concessions, exemptions, and waiver should be removed. Another notable argument is that tax rate is very high. The complaint like that in Nigeria. But during my research, I discovered that tax rate in Nigeria is not that high, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the tax rate in Nigeria for personal income tax is not high. It is the highest rate of 24 percent. But I discovered in my research that there are countries with as high as over 60 percent. Finland. 62.2%. Sweden has 61.86%. Denmark, 65.9%. Aruba, Belgium, Chad, and Ivory Coast, and the Dutch and Germany, 60%.
they have these agencies in their statutes. These are expenses are wholly, exclusively, necessarily, and reasonably incurred. We have it in all, nearly all the tax systems. So that has generated a lot of argument because it is not defined in any of the tax laws. So in Nigerian case, Gulf Oil Company versus Federal Board of Finland Revenue, the court also noted that the terms were not defined. So J tried to define those agencies. He said wholly means entirely, exclusively means substantial or even solely. Why necessarily means appropriately or inevitably. Now, is taxation a separate profession or part of accountancy? That's the next question which has generated a lot of argument. And actually, two notable professional bodies, the ICANN and CI10, they had to approach the tax to the court to give a judicial interpretation of this. Now, whether taxation is a separate profession of accountancy or not, has made these two bodies to raise voices. In my view, taxation is an old profession in its own right. And it is given due recognition in the Holy Bible. If you look at St. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, the words tax and taxing are mentioned four times. Number one, it was written in the Bible, you can check your Bible, and it came to pass in those days that then went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. I repeat that, all the world should be taxed. Now, there are all the countries in the world in post taxes, so nobody should complain. It has its origin in the Bible, because the Bible said all the world should be taxed. Okay, that all the world should be taxed. So that is that one. The second one is that taxing was made when Israel was governor, all went to be taxed. That is about that. So the issue of taxation has its origin in the Bible. So I'm now talking about the issue of CIT and American that has been settled amicably. Now, what constitutes trade, business, profession, and vocation? That too has generated a lot of argument, such that in order to determine what is trade, the British HMRC UK they have to set up what is called parties of trade. And the parties of trade were originally six. Blowers. 
Then the loss of wealth, individual, high wealth individual, high net worth individual, and ultra high net worth individuals are examined. We have got this my phone, good money outside the country. Voices are also placed in IFL. IFL is the distant flow funds, because it's hard to get it first, which includes on the mind share, is widening the contracts, and also slightly investments. The issue of beneficial ownership is another key factor about the global complaint, whereby it has been said that many owners of companies operating in the extractive sector are not known. Transport pricing is also a key issue. So many conferences have been placed on the issue of the transport pricing. Voices have also been placed through 90, about 20 bodies. They report through 90. They have exposed a lot of inadequacy about some um, regulatory agencies. And what are the measures to close international reports? They include standard for automatic exchange. That was a launch to disclose common reporting standards that should tax and put programs voting and encourage ownership disclosure. Nigeria has also signed some multilateral instruments to help tax avoidance and tax division. Now there's another key point. People that are some of people that are in fact as politically exposed persons, PEP, VEP. There are different types of PEP. There's foreign PEP, there's domestic PEP, international organization PEP, and family PEP. Section 4, there are things what we need to do to raise the level of tax compliance, discover or study, which can help to improve tax compliance. They discovered that 20% of Nigerian surveyed paid income tax in 2018. Tax moral in Nigeria is very low. Small businesses have stronger tax moral than individuals. Most Nigerians have limited knowledge of the tax system. So they are working on that using this information from that survey to improve the voluntary compliance in Nigeria. There's need to simplify the tax laws. Then the role of the revised national tax policy was not ignored, as well as the recommendation of the national tax policy. There have been some conflicting voices in the judiciary. In the case of whether water is a basic food item or not, two different federal high courts, they gave contracting opinion whether basic food, whether water is a basic food item and vertical or not vertical. So there's need to train our judges so that they don't cause confusion about taxation. There is a distribution of bad policies and derivation that have been some call on that. Then the reform, the highlight of all this reform is that there's been a lot of improvement in taxes collected in Nigeria, especially what was collected in FRS. And in 2018, there was a lot of collection that was made in FRS, and also the state internal revenue services, they have improved their collection, particularly the LRS, which is leading. I think Ogo State is number three, River State is also doing well, and so Kwara State has also done very well as a result of the reform we carried out. And that is on tax revenue trends. In section five, I looked at what needs to be done to connect taxpayers and tax authorities. To connect is to join together, disconnect is the opposite of to connect. So what needs to be done are highlighted in the lecture group. For example, in Quara, they have connected taxpayers through their community impact program. So that is one that can be done. Some state governments also are now employing POS system to collect taxes. We can also learn from other countries in order to connect taxpayers to tax authority. The HRM, they have put some measures in place that you can look at. There's interactive tax assistance tool, the taxpayer adjustment. Then there's a tax refund. When there's a tax refund, they pay their tax refund promptly without allowing taxpayers to wait for it. Then there's a taxpayer's bill of rights. You can connect through the social media. There's IRS number block. There are the use tweets and other forms of communication to connect. The now, the last bit I'm on recommendations to connect taxpayers and also to improve voluntary tax compliance. First of all, you need to find the taxpayers. If you don't find the taxpayers, you cannot assess them. So the first thing to do is to find the taxpayers. Probably that was why the taxpayer identification number was put in place, which is a, a, under the 
Federal Indian Revenue Service Establishment Act, actually Section 8Q of the FRS Establishment Act 2007, Cap F36, introduces TIN. And the why TIN was introduced is to be able to find the taxpayers because the functions of the tax authority are four. One, identify the taxpayers. After you have identified the taxpayers, assess the taxpayers. I want to assess the taxpayers, collect the tax from the taxpayers. After you have collected taxes from the taxpayers, don't pocket the taxes. Account for the taxes you have collected. Let the taxes reach the central bank. Where it becomes very difficult for you to collect that tax, you cannot but enforce. That is why we have some sections in the law, particularly in the Federal Revenue Service Establishment Act of F36. There are so many provisions in FRS Act. Um, in fact, I think about a whole section of section 36 or so were devoted to enforcement activities. I recall very well, uh, I played a role about the NEPA House, National Electric Power Authority House, I think number 17B, Nawulawo Road, which FRS is now occupying. That house used to belong to old NEPA. The old Federal Revenue Service, either 2.1 billion or 1.2 billion. I was the coordinating director in charge of compliance and enforcement in FRS. Myself and the, and the tax operation group coordinating director, we held so many meetings with MD NEPA. They admitted, because everything that needed to be done according to law has been done, the assessment was already final and conclusive, they had agreed that they were going to pay the tax. But where is the money? There was no money. So we now use other powers. You know FRS has so many powers to use. So one of the powers that FRS power, we can use was power of seize and seizure. So we, you know, use that law. We took over that property, and I'm happy the chairman of Federal Revenue Service is here. The office is now belongs to the Federal Revenue Service because we have used our power of search and seizure. So that's that one. So we can continue to use that one. Then operate a simple tax system, collect the taxes due, role of tax advisors in sustaining a good tax system. Tax advisors, especially the CITN that is here today, we are, we are not calling upon you to make sure that you advise your clients, advise them properly and professionally. Let them understand the law. If you are in tax practice, you may need to have some lessons for them. Let them know the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. Some of them, they don't know the difference. Some of them, they don't know the sections of the law that they should use. They need to know all these things. Please put them right so that they may not find them, your clients may not find themselves in jail one day because that is being done in other countries. And Nigeria may just woke up one day and said it's not only the taxpayer that is guilty, but the tax consultant that is advising legally should also be charged along with the taxpayer. So we should try and sustain self-assessment scheme. I know there's a regulation which FRS has drawn, so let that regulation, please, let that regulation work. They run voluntary compliance program. There's also comparative compliance. Taxpayers' right to be informed and assisted. Taxpayers' right to privacy. They have right to privacy, and then there's right to pay no more tax than the correct amount of tax. I know many tax authorities, they have their own charters, which they have drawn in respect of taxpayers' charter. Allow people to express their preferences. There was a research carried out by Lamberton in 2014. Four of them, they wondered whether they would make people hate taxes a little less and the process raise tax compliance. They found that people's tax aversion is influenced by two main factors. First, taxpayers have little sense of where their money is actually going. Where does the money go? So that makes them to have a version. We should let them know where the money goes. Secondly, taxpayers feel that they have no influence in the decision making as how their taxes are being spent. So give them voice, let them know how the taxes are being spent. They propose two solutions, but because of time, we can read it from the book. Then enforcement, I've mentioned enforcement. Enforcement for tax recovery is unavoidable. In some cases, the only way is to enforce. Just know that. But it should be the last step. And it has been done in so many countries. We just have to enforce. Austerity measures, policies, is not the answer. So many countries have used austerity measures. The countries where they have been used, it has not worked. In 2014, the European Union imposed austerity measures during the Greek crisis. It didn't work. UK eliminated 490 government jobs. The 
hot budgets by 49% did involve. German government eliminated 10,000 government jobs and raised taxes on nuclear war didn't work. So there are so many countries that I studied to so try to find out whether austerity measures will improve compliance. It has never worked. Now take a cue from the Swedish tax office. The Swedes are noted for high personal taxes. Even though they are noted for high personal taxes, but the Swedish tax agency, STA, is still very popular. Why is the STA so popular? Because the Swedish tax agency keeps track of important events in the life of the taxpayer. They do more than just collect tax. They keep track of many important events in their life. The STA is connected to the taxpayer from birth. The STA is connected to the taxpayer from birth. For instance, in Sweden, when the baby is born, the STA registers that birth. They send out a personal identity number. Is it the tax agency to whom the parents then apply to register the baby's name? So how can that baby run away? There's no way. Because from that, the baby has been captured. Each time you move, you have to notify the tax agency of your new address within a week. So no running away, no hiding. Even in death, you'll be requiring the services of the Swedish tax agency. The doctor who declares you dead informs the tax agency that this taxpayer is dead. And your grieving relatives will need to get the cremation or burial certificate required for the funeral from the tax office before they can say their final goodbyes. So, that is one. Another one is that correct mathematical error. In computation, you know, errors just come up once in a time. Correct those errors. Assist tax delinquent taxpayers. There are some taxpayers that are delinquent and they need to be assessed, they are assisted. The IRS offers payment arrangement for taxpayers to satisfy their debt through an installment agreement. Let there be an installment agreement so that they can be able to pay those taxes. Then, in imposing taxes, allow legal expenses standards called ALE. The ALE, our tax people to be able, what they will do is that they will determine how much taxpayers need as basic living expenses based on family size and where they live. Nigeria can also look at that. China has adopted a VAT administration information system, which they call Golden Tax Project Phase 3. So we can also look at that. They have invoices subsystem, VAT certificate system. Upon all, promote fiscally responsible citizenship. Then I can see this letter, although time is against me, but I just have to read this letter from the Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore. They usually write this tip their letter to their taxpayer. It goes like this. Dear taxpayer, as your partner in nation building, we are committed to providing excellent service to you. We will apply the tax laws fairly and make it simple and convenient for you to fulfill your tax obligations. We will be proactive, prompt, polite, competent, clear, and consistent when handling your tax matters. We will respond to you based on the following service standards and continually work on improving our turnaround time. We will answer 85% of calls within a minute, within one minute. We will reply to 80% of your mails within five working days. We will reply 80% of letters within 15 working days. We will process 100% of refunds within 30 days. Your feedback is important to us. That is a typical letter we give to taxpayers. Now, there is a book written by four, tax, four authors, the CFA, AOTK, and STEM, called Modern Taxpayer Charter. They make some recommendations which, if you happen to go through, we find it very useful. The last bit of my lecture is just about my contributions to research. I've mentioned that of the study group of 1991, tells of outcomes. One of the outcomes of the 1991 study group, which I was the court secretary, which I was the secretary, was the abolishment of wife allowance. It was abolished. And it was said that taxpayers, tax clearance applications should be issued within two weeks. I also participated in the multiple tax project of 1997, 
The outcome of the multiple taxes project led to the enactment of the three taxes and levies decree. Then the study group of 2003, I took part in the national tax policy. I was able to, I took part in revising about five versions of the national tax policy of 2012 and also worked on that of the 2017. The NSG expanded tax reform, I've mentioned that. I did some work in that. Then as the fiscal commissioner of the NSG, then in the Mid-Scale Foundation Fiscal Policy Roundtable, and one of the leads in that we are still working to try and increase Nigerians' fiscal space and to look at the tax policy needs which needs to be addressed. Better tax campaigns, we are also working on that. Now my contributions to Nigerian tax system. My contributions to the growth of the of FRIs are measurable and uncountable. I spent 43 years of my life reading, working, studying, teaching, lecturing, granting interviews, explaining, arguing, and researching on taxation since 1976 and I have not stopped. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I wish to praise on record that ever before I was attracted to university work, I have been involved in academic activities right from February and Venice service as a secretary to the board. We are used to drive speeches for the chairman of RS and drafted keynote addresses for the Minister of Finance on issues involving around taxation and the, and the economy. HR activities. As a director of HR, I conducted tutorials for directory labor and promotion. I produced HR policy for FRS, condition of service for FRS, and over note manner for FRS, and I was a part of the team that agreed some deliverables and milestones for FRS human capital development. The HR strategy blueprints and the HR management framework, HR processes and procedures. The FRS information circulars and technical circulars as the longest serving board secretary, which is seat I occupied for 15 years. I participated in the academic work of FRS producing nearly all the FRS information circulars. Some of them, they are still in use in FRS still today, although they are being amended. In operation of the 15-man board of FRS, I took part in that. Amendment in tax laws, I took part in amendment of many tax laws. Tax policy, I did a lot of work in that. And I presented so many papers on tax policy and then laws as well. FRS policy. In 2009, it was one of the policies of FRS to review all of its reports. As the coordinating director in charge, I was the one that led the review of 378 audit reports. Now, the other one that I did for FRS was that there was a time I used to represent the chairman of FRS in fact meetings, and there was no time FRS was found wanting in the reconciliation, the collection of FRS. by the International Bureau of Fiscal Documentation based in Amsterdam. I'm equally the technical advisor and head of research working group of the NSCQ. In February 2019, I was appointed as the only female member of the Nigerian Tax Advisory Committee. In April, in April 2019, I served as a co-chair as 
well as a member of Finance Subcommittee of the Old State Transition Committee 2019. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I had a real privilege to help me tax institutes as you mentioned. Since I joined the CIT and its formative years, I've contributed significantly to its growth. When I took my oath of office as the church president, I promised to make a significant difference in achieving a CIT that will be sustainable among all professional bodies. Through numerous and collective sounding initiatives, I was able to make that difference before I left that seat. I granted requests for special interviews from prominent media houses that were collaborating moves to promote us as a distinct profession. Apart from the CIBM and Caleb University, I granted the request of ACCA to collaborate with the CITN in respect of ACC curriculum. I accepted the request of IBFG and CITN actually participated in their symposium. I made collaborative moves with the Chartered Institute of Taxation of UK CIOT and also the Institute of Fiscal Studies in UK. I initiated a plan to collaborate with the Korean Institute, Korean Tax Institute, to support the CIT in the area of capacity building. Apart from visitations to NUC, which had been initiated by my predecessors, I visited 11 other institutions during my tenure to enlist them to introduce taxation in their circular. Some of the universities that I visited, apart from Caleb University, uh, Adelaide University, Afeba Badala University, Babcock University, Crownville University, Ayen Kori University, Inejo University, University of Bini, and University of Oshoko. <laughs> Contributions through the West African Union of Tax Institute. As the first female president of WAUT, I contributed to the growth of tax profession through that platform. I participated in Wauti conferences either as a delegate or a paper presenter. And during my tenure, Wauti formally became a member of the Global Association of Tax Advisors. I also participated in the Forum of CFE Fiscal Committee in Brussels. I attended their annual meetings there. I've also supported the Tax and Good Governance in Africa, a project which took me to Vienna where I had to present a paper. And having said that, I have written some books. Now, acknowledgement, I'm in the last meeting with the Vice Chancellor, sir. At this point, I wish to register my pool of appreciation to those that have traveled with me on the journey of my life in taxation. In the same vein, my next appreciation will go to all those that have contributed to me in one way or the other to bring me to the realms of academics because I was doing my work gender in FRS as a public tax collector. Let me start with Professor Ishoma Rufus Akito Epeuti. Please can you guys for the recognition? January 2016 to teach ACC 821 at 
advanced taxation. With that, I commend my journey of academic pursuit in the university environment rather than in a public sector arena where I was used to. Professor Akito A, the support in my academic journey has been overwhelming. Therefore, it is pertinent that I acknowledge you openly at this forum. Thank you very much. The second invitation came quickly on 23 January 2017 from the Minami of the University of Kodo. I've had a doctor in the I don't know whether it's here. If you are here, please can you for the commission? It was the HOD accounting, I don't know whether it's still the HOD accounting. He made a similar recommendation whereby I was offered as a, an appointment as a part time lecturer in two courses. SCC 723, Principles of Taxation, and SCC 823, Taxation Theory and Practice. Dr. Atu, thank you very much. I appreciate you. <laughs> now, A-Lab University, my university now. My love is still with FRS, I'm Mr. Fowler, but I'm now with Caleb University. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Ayodichi, I respectfully call your name, sir. You have a special place in my heart. Tell Madam when you get home that you have a special place in my heart. <laughs> the greatest amazement in my life was experienced at my valedictory ceremony on June 6, 2016, 6-6, where I gave account of my stewardship as the 12th president of CIT. During the event, Professor Ayodichi Aino, the vice chancellor of Caleb University, who was one of the special guests of CIT, stepped down from the high table to deliver his good tidings. He called out some senior staff who were there with him. Those he called out were Professor Chef Mwajibola, please sir, can you guys observe? He called out Professor Chef Mwajibola, He did not fill up university. He also called out Professor Ngozi Emecheta, PhD, who was the head of accounting department of Caleb University, and my amiable sister, Mrs. Falake Opro, the Registrar of Caleb University. The Vice Chancellor of Caleb University then gave his broadcast in the midst of over 150 guests in the CIT Hall. He brought out a white envelope. I was watching him. He gave a loud announcement that the Senate and the Governing Council of Caleb University have approved my appointment, English major, as a full professor of taxation. <laughs> With that appointment, I became the first female professor of taxation in Nigeria. <laughs> I was dazed. I was open mouthed non-closed. The announcement left me completely flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I cannot thank you enough. All the members of the Shoyuba family that are here, rise up. My children rise up and say thank you, sir, to the Vice Chancellor. Say thank you to Caleb University. relationship from my colleagues. The Professor Loza Owens, he was my first dean. He received me very well. He's now the acting vice chancellor. Thank you very much, sir, for welcoming me. <laughs> Professor Femi Obabacho, my current dean, thank you, sir. Professor Lufemi Oloju, <laughs> Professor Ikyo, Dr. Jetui, and all my other colleagues in Caleb, thank you very well. And my dear sister, thank you very much for standing in for me. Registrar, thank you, madam. I thank you all. The Federal Library Service, I appreciate you for laying the platform for me that I stepped on 
for transiting me from a, from a pure as disciple to a guru taxation. Let me restate my appreciation to FRS, which I wrote clearly in those books, like the tax reference books. On the dedication page, I poured encomium on FRS. I said, FRS is like a foster parent, which nurtured, developed, trained, and supported me to become a veteran in taxation, a process that lasted 34 years of my life, now 42 years of my life. I still retain that same feeling for FRS. I would like to mention the supportive role of, this, of Mr. Tode Fowler, the executive chairman of FRS. Thank you very much. He supported me overwhelmingly during my tenure as a certain president. He also gave us a bailout during the World Tea Conference. All the chairmen of State Internal Revenue Service joined us all, equally gave me a hand of comfort. The chairman of NRS decided to support for releasing yourself to be at this, at this program. And thank you very much. He also supported me during my annual tax conferences. The former secretary of the Joint Tax Board, now secretary of the Tax Appeal Committee, Chief Hosseini Elama, thank you very much. He's here. Thank you. Alaji Elama Obaka. Alaji Hosseini. I'm not going to mention your name. We understand this ourselves. <laughs>
two children. Please can you rise up? They are both present. Thank you. 
Nigerian animation, I forgot to recognize the icon. This is of Chasa Accountant of Nigeria. Icon is here. Is here. It's from Icon. If you look at the photograph at the last page, that photograph is telling the story. The battle is over. Is it not over? It is over. You can see me, the 12th president of CIT, and Alati Zachary, the 53rd president of ICANN. Is the battle not over between ICANN and CIT? It is over. Thank you very much. Can we rise up and give another round of applause for us? Engineer Godwin Tibodu, 
distinguished member of our Governor Council, so please join us.
Then the VIP, she will kindly move to the council chamber. That's located on the first floor of the administrative block for entertainment. While we ask other guests, staff, and students to remain on their seats for entertainment. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Thank you. 
2% and around there is light refreshment for all and sundry, but for the VIPs, a special place has been provided for the right kind of treat. Thank you so much.